Greetings. Today, we're going to show you the difference between spinning on the axis and orbiting. Okay? And this will totally debunk the globe. We're introducing the uh, Kraft Lager from 49 Parallel. Let's get to it. Awesome. Okay. So let's put that up here. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just want to show off the new hoodie as well. Okay. All right. So, um, what are we waiting for? Okay, so you have this that's spinning on the axis. Okay, that's the axis, and you're spinning, okay, around your own axis. Now, here, okay, that's orbiting. Okay, now the math for orbiting is not the same as the math. For spinning. Whew, who would have thought? Two different kinds of centrifugal force. The centrifugal force for orbiting depends on radius. The centrifugal force for spinning does not depend on radius. You see? You remember we had the two rings. Okay? So if these are spinning at the same speed, Okay, let's say like fake globe earth over a thousand miles an hour you can see they're the same material they're the same thickness well guess what the radius doesn't matter the force is going to be the same everywhere around the circumference and that's why it's called radial centrifugal force okay so how are we doing so far let's just pop the ball off and we're going to swing it around. Let's uh, set this up here. Okay. Come on now. Okay, we got half of it right there. Let's put it all together. Yeah. I'm gonna put this thing to rest once and for all, you guys. Had enough of people monkeying around. So this, okay, let's see if we can, okay, that <laughs> depends on radius. So the shorter the radius, it's gonna have more force. You make the radius bigger, okay, It has less force. And that's the whole trick of the globe religion. Okay, that's how they get their 300 to 1 ratio. It's dependent on this type of mathematics for this type of situation. And then they have the nerve to try and apply that to the situation where you're spinning like this. How stupid. Okay, and that's it. The video is done. Okay, um, I'll just talk a little more because... I feel like it. I'll get into more details of forces and things like that. We're going to debunk gravity as well. Obviously, there's no gravity, but we're going to point out how stupid it is. Okay. So, let's just see why we got this here. Okay, so there's tension in the string here. Okay. All right. Tension. It's the same everywhere on the string. Okay, everywhere the same tension. Well, that just happens to be the case with the rings. The tension, that's what's called hoop stress. It's F over two pi is the breaking point for just one point. And F over pi for both points, okay? So the tension in this ring is gonna be the same. No different than in this string, okay? These people are stupid. And so when they try to apply 
this mathematics to the ring, they go, oh, it's in increments <laughs> all around. Yeah, right, buddy. It's stupid. It's f over 2 pi everywhere the same. That's called centrifugal radial force. Okay. So, let's just get this back on its stand. Little teddy bears on here. Very appropriate. It's just a toy. There. Okay, so we're back to spinning. And orbiting. Hey there. How you doing? Good, good. Okay, so we talked about the two different types of centrifugal force. Let's have a sip of beer. Alright, okay, so what they're suggesting, you know, what they're claiming is that, you know, there's this thing called gravity and that's what's going to keep the whole ball together from exploding. Let's get an idea of the forces involved here, okay? So you got fake low birth, okay, spinning like that. And that generates what's called hoop stress. Okay. We're going to cheat in the globe's favor. We'll reduce all the weight to just this ring. <clears throat> so if this ring was one inch in cross section, okay, one inch thick, and you're spinning that a thousand miles an hour, okay, let's take titanium. That would take you to about 109 psi at every single point. 109, sorry, 109,000 PSI, okay, it's done right there, all right, if you do it for iron, 1,000 miles an hour, you get about 209 PSI everywhere, but here's the thing, the iron, that's just theoretical, that's a calculation, the iron is not going to handle uh, a hundred thousand more psi than titanium. Okay, titanium can can't even hold together at a thousand miles per hour. If you're spinning this around, okay, it won't make it. Okay, but it comes close. So let's say titanium max can handle a hundred thousand psi. Okay, that's roughly the strength of the molecular bonds. Are you going to tell me that gravity, the weak force, is pulling in? at 300 times the, the strength of molecular bonds? Are you mental? Okay, no, it's not. Okay, gravity is not stronger than any molecular bond, period. It's just a weak force, all right? So think about that. Now add in all the weight of this ridiculous thing. Okay, add that in. Okay, you're gonna have a couple dozen zeros at the end of the PSI. All right, trillions, many trillions of PSI at every point on this equator. Okay, you think gravity is going to pose that 300 times? Okay, you're insane. Okay, so there's that mental case, uh, Paul Sterex on there. He's done now. I finally got him again. Okay, first with his equinoxes, I shut him down. He introduced me, uh, no, he came at me to talk to me. Oh, yeah, hey, you seem like a nice uh, flat earther. And he started throwing equinoxes out at me. So I quickly shot him down. I said, hey, here's a website. Look at how you guys uh, explain equinoxes. Every single word was imagine this, imagine that, imagine that, all the way until you had to imagine a dome. <laughs> a dome. That was it. That was the last time he ever, ever, ever went around using that example, except maybe against some retard. I don't know. But as far as I know, he stopped. Now, he thought that he had something here. All he was doing was conflating, okay, mixing together 
the two different types of centrifugal forces. Okay, the one that depends on radius and the one that doesn't. The one that doesn't depend on radius at a thousand miles an hour is freaking huge. It's many trillions of PSI. And he tries to say, oh, yeah, gravity opposes that. So therefore, uh, there's no hoop stress. Mental case, okay? There's, no, there's not even a radial. You can talk about the radial component of that centrifugal force when you're spinning like this. But really, the molecular bonds absorb it all, and they change it into a lateral ripping force at every point on here. It wants to rip apart, okay? It's a whole, it's all different physics. Different physics, different math, okay, different forces, period, all right? So yeah, so that's it for gravity. Gravity is retarded. It could never, ever, ever work, all right? Gravity, the weak force, is suddenly going to be opposing hoop stress? No, not a chance. Okay, so that's it. That was the whole trick that they do. They take the ball and string math that we showed, and they try, they misapply it to here. They conflate it. They invent their own physics like, oh, the centrifugal force, the total is spread out around the rim, which is equivalent to saying the tension is in increments. So when you tense the string, okay, we're, we're tensing this, it's the same tension everywhere, okay? But they're gonna try to tell you for that distance is that much tension, and then for this much, you're gonna have that much more tension. Stupid, it does not work like that, all right? So that's the globe for you. That's how stupid and fake and fraudulent it is. Okay? It's based on fake physics, fake math, and fake forces. You go to spin1.flat.wtf and it explains it. And then there's spin2.flat.wtf. So the first one exposes the 300 to 1 hoax. The second one introduces you to hoop stress, like how big it is. And then spin3.flat.wtf's got some calculations and it totally destroys gravity in every possible way. Yeah. So let's just finish off here with another sip of beer and we'll talk about some of the assumptions that they say and we'll do a little summary list. Hang on. So this is an intact object. Whoa. That globe went flying. It's got a couple dents in it. That's okay. Now it's starting to look like Moonshiner's globe. Shout out to Moonshiner. Okay. I don't need that ring anymore. So the assumption, okay, you're going to tell me that <laughs> this is going to be spinning, right? Okay, well, did you know a broken uh, object can't spin? Okay, you need tensile strength. Okay. Fake globe Earth has zero tensile strength because of the plate tectonics BS. It's covered in zero tensile strength materials, water and loose sand. That's not gonna spin. Not only that, it's not even balanced. Okay, the faster you go, the more important balancing becomes, period. Thousand miles an hour, are you mental? That's, uh, that's almost as fast as the A380, the fan blade of the A380 jet engine. Um, yeah, the Trent 900 for the A380 uh, jet planes. Okay, that thing goes very close to 1,000 miles an hour. It's about 3,000 RPM. It's about a 10-foot diameter. And it's um, each blade is a solid titanium. And the force at the tip of each blade is equal to a 110-ton locomotive. All right. So, no. Gravity ain't going to be opposing hoop stress ever. Okay, so you see the problem, all right? That amount of force, balancing is, is everything. Balancing is everything. And so you're gonna have water opposing um, continents with mountains, and, and you're gonna be spinning that around? No, your mantle would never, ever, ever work, ever, period. So. Let's just kill this thing right now. First thing on the list to debunk the globe is one word, radius, done.
Okay, the real math for spinning depends on, doesn't depend on radius. The fake math does, and they try to conflate the two together. So in one word, all of their math, all of their examples, everything depends on radius. That's how they get the 300 to one. So you kill them right there. If you want to kill it, right there, one word, radius, okay? Now why do they actually ignore f over two pi? That's the hoop stress. That's in the, you know, it's gonna be the many trillions of PSI. That's why they invented um, their fake, you know, forces and all that. And that's why they misapply the math because that's something that, you know, they could pass off on paper and to people who don't know physics, okay? So radius is one. Two, you can't spin a broken ball. Done right there. So if you wanna kill it, you can kill it this way as well. You don't need no math or nothing. Just say, hey, you can't spin a broken ball. Zero tensile strength. How are you gonna get the hoop stress? Um, where's the tension gonna be? Okay, done, you killed it right there. Can't spin a broken ball. Three, okay, let's pretend it's a solid ball. Okay, titanium. Where's the tension in the ground that correlates with a thousand miles per hour and all that extra weight, okay? It should be many trillions of PSI of tension in the ground, it's not there. Not only that, it's gotta be in the water, in the sand, which is mental, okay? Doesn't work like that. But gravity can do it, oh yeah, yeah, it changes physics. Just cause gravity's involved, hoop stress disappears. That's what Paolo Salucci, the biggest retard, okay? He's so stupid that he repeats the lies of Paulster X. It's okay for Paulster X because, you know, he's, let's say, the originator. But then to have this guy who is supposedly a doctor and uh, repeating the bullshit of Paulster X is unfathomable. Okay, and I've included that on the Spin 3 page, um, a debunk of a Paulster X comment and a debunk of a Paulo Salucci comment. And we even got an excerpt of Gothe, what he thinks of people who copy stupidity. You should see how nicely Gothe says. It's just intolerable. It makes us miserable. And that's Paulo Salucci, okay? So that's it, it's two different maths. It's a whole different thing. It's apples and oranges, okay? Simple as that. Apples is swinging, okay? Orbiting, that's apples. Spinning is oranges. You can't mix the two. Okay, Pulsar X, you can't mix the two, so shut up. Okay, um, so we were going down the list. We said radius. Um, we said hoop stress. F over 2 pi is huge. No, no, we said you can't spin a broken ball. Okay, so those are the first three things. Yeah, F over 2 pi is huge. You can't spin a broken ball. Um, what else is there that instantly kills the globe? Well, that's it. Those, those are the main three things you need to know. Okay? So it's done. All right? You can't spin a broken ball. Earth is a broken ball. Could never work. Um, hoop stress is too big. Not even solid titanium can withstand it. There's no tension in the ground. Or just say radius. <laughs> your, all your math involves radius. You're done. Okay? It's apples and oranges. The proper math does not involve radius. Okay? So let's uh, write out the proper math and uh, maybe wrap it up. I kind of hate to have to go so soon, but you know. We just want to keep it efficient. This is, might as well recycle the bag that the beer came in. Okay, so I'll write the equation out. Um, you'll see there's no radius here. And that's the spin 3.flat.wtf um, has the math of how radius factors out, it's easy. We already explained it, as you increase the radius, you're also increasing the weight. And the weight varies directly with the force. Okay, so it's on top of the equation. And then 
radius again varies the velocity varies inversely with radius it's on the bottom the two r's cancel out it doesn't even factor into the equation okay so f over 2 pi equals coefficient times v squared which equals s disruptive force so f over 2 pi equals coefficient that's just dependent on the material and v squared the speed so all you really need is the speed this you can look up in a table and you've automatically you can calculate f just multiply by 2 pi all right that's it paul you're done you're an idiot you're an embarrassment go ahead and keep conflating the two and saying it somehow works but you already said that if I could show the difference, even though I showed it to you a thousand times, oh, I might have a point. No, I have a point, Paul. <laughs> it's apples and oranges, all right? Nothing you say ever makes any sense. It doesn't work. And Paulo Salucci, your sidekick, you're a clown, a clown, okay? That's it, that's all I can say for you. You're an embarrassment, all right? A dunce, yeah. And that's the end of the globe!